M video that I recently released regarding its history. So it's divided, well, if people want to be interested in that, then we'll look at the development history of the T-22, the Russian Tier 10 premium tank. Now we're going to skip a few lines and start here at the T-44 which is the best place to start now the t-44 in itself is effectively an upgraded version of the t-3485 effectively it was the bait the t-3485 was the basis for this tank they improved the armor they improved the overall rideability and they stuck a bigger gun in unfortunately it wasn't such a success now that's real life T-44 there with its original 85mm gun. As you can see, it's basically a T-34-85 turret plonked on top of a redesigned hull. This vehicle never saw combat um, in real life. About 2,000 were built. Uh, it just came too late, unfortunately. However, the Russians did keep it a big secret until about the 1960s when it became obsolete. Following on from the T-44, we have this tank, a T-44-100. This was basically a prototype tank. During the war, the Russians were finding that they were being outgunned by a lot of the German guns. And whilst the 85mm gun was a nice gun, it really didn't pack the punch that they wanted. So they took a T-44, well two of them in fact, and they upgraded the gun into two prototypes. These two prototypes were known as the T-44-100. Now the designation after trials was that of the T-44-B, and it was a vast improvement over the T-44. It had slightly better mobility, it had a much better gun, but they still had a few teething problems. There is a real-life T-44-100. Um, as you can see, it's basically an upped-gunned T-44. The Russians decided that this was a good basis to move forward. So taking the T-44-100 prototypes, they decided to refine it even more, which eventually led on to this tank, the T-54 Mod 1. So this is the first prototype for what we now know as the T-54. And if you look at it closely, it's a modified T-44 hull with effectively a T-44 turret and a bigger gun. They also improved the armor on the hull and they vastly improved it. And whilst it's called the Mod 1, its actual designation is T-54-1. And this was basically the very first prototype of what would then lead on to the T-54. And there is a surviving example of a T-54 Model 1 on display in Russia. The thing was, the Russians were tinkering a lot at this stage with the T-54, the chassis and the hull. And they eventually moved on to another tank. Uh, this was a proposed tank. It was a T-54 lightweight. It was meant to be similar to the Mod 1, but... As you can see here, it's a smaller hull and a completely different turret. And it was meant to be a lighter version of the Mod 1. Now, in real life, the T-54 Lightweight didn't actually get off the drawing board. It didn't exist as a tank in its true terms. But the Russians did develop what is called the T-54-2 as a prototype, which was in fact a lighter weight vehicle of the T-54 Mod 1. And there is a picture of one on trials. This is the T-54-2. It's not the same as the lightweight, but it is a lot lighter than the T-54 Mod 1. And you can start to see here the move away from the T-44 turret to this more rounded type of turret, which is actually inspired from the IS-3. However, the Russians still tinkered and they had another one called a Object 137SH. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of that and it's not in the game, so there's no point showing it to you. But those eventually led to this tank, the T-54M, which we know in the game as just the T-54. Now, this was the end of the production for the prototypes, going from the T-44-100 and eventually led to this. Basically, they'd refined the hull 
cut down the weight and modified that turret to give us this tank. Initially it was designated the Object 137G or the T-54A. The thing was, it was still really a prototype. A few of them were built. It wasn't a very successful tank and it eventually led to the T-54B which had a better gun, albeit it's still a 100mm smoothbore. And that proved more successful than the T-54M. By now, it was getting to 1955 and NATO armor and nuclear Cold War was on the horizon, so they decided to change and upgrade the tank even further, mainly to deal with nuclear capabilities. So they took the T-54, which was pretty good at its nuclear capability, by the way, and upgraded it to the T-55. <clears throat> but they also found that that needed further upgrading, and they came up with this, the T-55A. Now the T-55A was basically an improved MBC version of the T-55, which in itself was an improved version, MBC-wise and ammunition-wise, of the T-54. Now we don't have the T-55 in the game. The thing about the T-55 that you notice between the T-54 that we have in the game is the turret. The turret was modified to basically take on board this improved MBC system and there is a picture of a T-55A looking a bit sorry for itself, bless it. Whilst the T-54 and the T-55 were relatively good tanks, the Russians still wanted to tinker. Um, one of the things they wanted to do was minimize the profile and make it a lot better mobility and armor wise. And it went out to tender and they came up with this tank, which is one of three prototypes. This is the Object 140 that we have in the game. Now the three prototypes, basically what happened was the, the Ministry of Transport and Engineering in 1952 wanted better designs for a medium tank based on the T-54 in order to improve the T-54. Essentially they wanted better mobility, better armour and better overall accuracy and one of the designs that they came up with was this the object 140 which was an improved version of the t54 so they took the basic the design of the t54 and just improved it this was one of three prototypes doing the rounds at this stage the ministry of transport and engineering in 52 had requested designs for improved medium tanks to basically replace the T-54 and this was one of those designs. The other design was this which in the game is called the T-62A but in real life was actually called the Object 430 which was the initial prototype design and as you can see it bears similarities to the Object 140 because they're both based effectively on the T-54. The difference between the two is that this one had slightly improved turret and slightly better armour. It lacked the same mobility as the Object 140, but it was an improvement over the T-54. This tank eventually went on to become the Object 165, and there is a T-62A there which eventually went on to become the T-64. This was the winning design out of the three designs, and it's the only one that went forward. The Object 140 was dropped, and the next design, which was the third prototype, was also dropped. Which leads us nicely to the third prototype, which we have in the game as the Tier 10 T-22M. It was never called the T-22M in real life. It was actually designated as the Object 907. And they came up with three designs for this tank. They had a cast hull and they had two welded hulls. The turret was basically taken from an IS-3. When, you know, they, they basically took the T-54 chassis and they molded it along the lines of the IS-8, which was never actually called the IS-8, it was actually called the T-10. 
or to give it its more correct designation, the Object 730. Now, what they did here was keep the mobility of a medium tank, but give it some of the attributes of a heavy tank. So, they took the turret from this tank, which was developed, this is the IS-3, and they intended, because they really liked this turret, they intended to stick that on top of a medium hull based on this tank, the IS-8. Now, you can see here that it has a very well-defined pike nose. In fact, it's more well-defined than the IS-3. And if you look at this tank closely and compare it to the T-22, the T-22 hull is basically that hull shortened and based on a T-54. The, they didn't take the IS-8 turret, they took an IS-3 turret and they married it to this shortened version of this IS-8 hull. And that's the original blueprint, that's what it looked like, that was the original design drawing of what a T-22M was going to look like. Now the problem they faced was how were they going to get all these components into this tank? And it was a very difficult thing to address. By shortening everything they couldn't use the same engine as the IS-8 and they couldn't use the same components within the IS-8 and it became really really complex for the Russians to design. However, they did make some prototypes. There is the mock-up prototype of the cast hull of a T-22 and as you can see it's, it's a very sleek design and this was the idea. Now when they tested this tank it was by far superior to any tank that the Russians had at the time. It was going to outstrip all of the current Russian designs. It was far more superior than the T-62A and the Object 140 combined. The biggest problem they had, however, whilst it was easy to cast the hull, which they did, it was really overly complex to fill it up with the engine and all the components required to actually make the tank work. It was eventually dropped. It didn't go further than these prototype halls uh, because it was just deemed to be too complex. So what happened was they went in favour of the T-62A, they developed it to this tank which is the Object 430, which if you look closely carries a lot of the characteristics of the T-22M. It's got some sloping armour at the front, it's got a similar chassis, it's a narrowed down IS-8 without the pike nose because it's based on a T-54 and that is the same gun. This tank eventually led to this tank, the T-64, which became a mainstay of Soviet forces for the rest of the Cold War and is seen today as one of the best tanks of its generation. So that's been a brief history of the T-22M, a tank that went past the initial design stage, almost made it to a full-blown prototype, but it was too complex so it never was. It would have been OP in real life and just like in the game it would have been a pain in the backside. Unfortunately the Russians decided not to develop it any further. So, that's been the brief history of the development of the T-22M. I've been Fujit. I hope that's been educational. I hope that's uh, answered some of the queries and questions that I've received since putting up my T-22M review video and guide. By all means, comment and like and all the other stuff below. If you haven't already, please press subscribe. It's a nice thing to do. If you've got any decent replays, send them to me at fujitsblit at gmail.com or join my Discord server and upload them there. You can now also follow me on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And until the next time, stay safe out there, have fun on the battlefield and happy tanking because, you know, that's what it's all about. Having fun and being happy.